hello guys today we are going to be talking about a very important topic in physics which is titled motion motion um first of all we are going to be going into the first basic which is what is motion um i will start by saying that motion is defined by the changing position of a body when a body at point a changes position and move to another point point b no matter how metal the position was changed it is called motion no matter how method no matter the pattern the way the position was changed in as much as it changed its position from point a and now move to a new point called point b this particle has just undergo what we call motion so motion is the change in position of a body now this means that motion is an intrinsic behavior of every matter it's a fundamental behavior of every matter every matter must perform motion not not it's, it's not a must actually but in our everyday life motion is is a uh is a normal pattern me talking to you you hearing my voice my my sound was transmitted it moved in wave motion for me to be able to move this biro from this point now to this point the biro had just undergo motion so motion anything that deals with movement talks about motion are we getting it now first of all let us talk about the type of motion that we have the types of motion that we have first of all the first type of motion i will talk about is called translational motion translational motion translational motion now what is translational motion translational motion is the motion of a body moving in a linear path you understand is the linear motion of a body most times um, a body moving in a translational motion um, undergoes some sensitive type of motion inside but the general overview of the motion is translational for example let me say a car now we have a car here and this car move from um, point a is the car this car moved from this point to this point to another point now the overview movement of the car is regarded as translational motion because it has just moved linearly from a point to another point now the the motion doesn't have to be in a straight line but we observe a general movement of the body from one point to another so we classify it as translational motion it's like a linear movement from one point to another so this is what we call translational motion are we getting it now example of translational motion we have number one a man walking um, a man walking along a street is an example of translational motion um, another example is a car moving along a road an example is a boy running, a car um, running, a goat running. All these are translational uh, motion. Um, uh, the motion of a ball, when you shoot a ball um, along a vertical path, is also um, a type of, I think it's a type of translational motion. So, translational motion is a linear motion of a body. Now, the next type of motion that we begin to um look at is called um the next type of motion that we begin to look at is called um rotational motion rotational motion rotational motion now 
Now, what is rotational motion? Rotational motion is the motion of a body rotating along an axis. It's the motion of a body rotating along an axis. Now, you should not mistake this for circular motion. I will explain the difference between rotational motion and circular motion later. Now, it's a motion of a body rotating along an axis. What do we mean? Now, if I take um if I take um something like a circular ring a circular ring are we there and um i allow it there is a gap here there is a gap here then i pass a thin metal through the pipe then i rotate this um this disc either by my hand i just flip it and it started rotating the type of motion observed by this body is called a rotational motion why is it called a rotational motion because the whole body the whole body like this is moving around a path is rotating along an axis along an axis this is different from circular motion because it is the whole body is moving around an axis an axis now um for circular motion that's the next type of motion but before we um talk about circular motion we will explain an example of this rotational motion example of this rotational motion is the tire of a vehicle like the tire is rotating the whole body is trying to rotate along an axis so this type of motion is called a rotating uh, motion now if you observe if you now try to go deeper into this car you discover that this car is undergoing translational and rotating motion because no it's not the car actually the tire of the car is undergoing translational because as the tire is rotating the tire is moving from one point to another on a linear path and at the same time the whole tire is rotating so the type of motion undergo by tire of a car is called translational because it's, it's along a path and rotational motion because it is rotating linearly along a path okay um in this and along an axis sorry the next type of motion we'll be looking into in this class before we see the next thing we can do here is called circular motion circular motion circular motion so it's important you understand the difference between um circular motion now what is circular motion circular motion if i have a radius like a cycle here are we there let me try to make it more clear something like this something like this something like this then i have a car or an object or any particle moving in this part in this circulated part is moving around this part at any point all the motion all the behavior is about this circulated part that body is undergoing what is called circular motion so we can say that circular motion is the motion of an object around a circular part now understand the difference between circular and rotational now this rotational motion is the body is rotating is rotating along an axis along an axis but this circular motion the body is moving around a part that is in form of a cycle so this type of motion is called circular motion example of um circular motion is the motion of a stone the motion of a stone tied on a rope 
and be weed is being weed for example if i tie a stone here and this is a rope then this is my hand i think this is my hand this is my hand um something like this okay okay don't mind the drawing okay this is my hand trying to wheel this rope round so this stone is moving in a circular path and as it's moving in a circular path it is called circular motion um if i have a car moving moving along um a circular path maybe a roundabout it's also called a circular motion i read here so circular motion what is important for you is to really understand the concept behind it the body is moving along a circulated um path the next type of motion we are going to be going into is called um oscillatory motion oscillatory oscillatory motion now when we talk about oscillatory motion the word oscillatory or oscillating is a type of movement that is periodical is periodical let us say for example i have a pendulum this is a pendulum bob around this part now i have a rope connecting this pendulum bob to a pole it's like a pole like this now at every time i discover that this pendulum bob when i apply a force here this pendulum bob will move from this position to this position are we there to this position in five minutes or let me say in five seconds in five seconds and after five seconds it will come back to this same position that i pushed the um, bob then when you come back to the position i will also push it again and it will return back to this position in five minutes and it will in five seconds sorry and it will come back again what is happening is that the bulb is repeating a a um, a certain pattern of motion every five seconds which means that every five seconds the bulb is repeating a certain type of motion so this type of motion that is periodical please be writing this down you understand this type of motion that is periodical is called oscillatory motion so an oscillatory motion is a periodic type of motion in which a body exhibit same pattern of motion at every periodic interval of time or at same periodic interval of time let us say for example um we have a pole here you know this uh, entertainment children try to do we call it jungle over <laughs> but, um, okay now um something like this get something like this okay something like something like this um something like this okay now this is the frame of so the frame now uh, this is a rope and this rope it have a chair right this rope have a chair now this chair anybody can sit on this chair are we there anybody can sit on this chair and what happens when someone sits on this chair the chair will be dangling to and fro to and fro to and fro and sometimes when we were in primary school secondary school we have we already have some a guy at the back that we push you at every periodic interval of time. The type of motion that the body sitting on this chair we exhibit is called a an oscillatory motion. Why? Because at every specified interval of time, 
the body will repeat the same motion. This type of motion is called oscillatory motion. It's a special topic that we're going to look into with time called simple harmonic motion. Are we there? Okay. All right, so um, let us revise what we have done so far. Let us revise what we have done so far. We talked about uh, translational motion. Talk about translational motion. Talk about translational motion. We talk about um, rotation, rotational motion, rotational motion, and you know rotational motion, all the bodies rotating along an axis. We talk about circular, circular motion, circular motion, and here we are at oscillatory. Three motion. I would like to add random motion. Random motion. Random motion. Now, what is a random motion? Um, a random motion. Random motion. Let me start by saying that a random motion is the unspecified directional movement of a body which means that when a body is moving the movement is not specified random motion you can write it down it's the unspecified directional movement of a body or we can say is the zigzag movement of a body the body move along a path that is not defined for example if i have um, a feather of um, of a bed, or we call it four. At a time, it being blown by breeze to this direction. After the next minute, it's at this direction. After the next minute, it's at this direction. After the next minute, it moved to this direction. After the next minute, it moved to this direction. After the next minute. It moves to this direction is a zigzag type of motion it's just moving the direction is not specified it cannot be specified in the next minute to predict the next movement so this type of motion is called random motion random motion for example we have a woman in the market trying to look for a son and the market is very crowded now what will this woman do and there is no specified part because all the normal road that's supposed to be moved by the woman has been blocked the woman will be moving these are people the woman will be moving trying to create space at this point maybe the woman will try to go to this side if we discover that that place is crowded it will go to this she will go to this side and she will discover that maybe this place also is crowded by people she will not move to this side this is what we call zigzag motion random motion you are not specified in the direction of the part or uh, uh, of the movement of the particle of the body so it's called random motion make sure you write those things down they are random motion are we there now example of a body exhibiting random motion there are four um the example i just made a woman moving in uh in a crowded market place yeah it's um it's an example of random motion um let us say breeze blowing uh breeze blowing uh a paper in the air it will move random and other type of example so if you have past questions also you can send it in the comments section below let us answer your question and see what we can do um i think we have tried here yeah, the next thing I will do, not actually the next thing, but the next um, topic I will go into is called speed, um, distance, and time. So I will it's, it's actually start from time, distance, and speed. So I will talk about time, distance, and speed. Um, I think before that one, I will talk about scalar and vector quantity. I won't go deep into scalar and vector quantity yet. 
I will just introduce scalars, type of scalars and vector quantity. Then I will talk about examples of scalars and vector quantity. Then I will talk about their SI unit. Um, don't worry, you will, you will get it. So thank you very much for watching. Try to subscribe to this channel and share it to your friends because from this channel, if you follow this channel very well, you can be able to answer and do well in any exam you come across relating to what we are teaching you right now. God bless you. Thank you.